So MacArthur Park is closed, just like the Baldwin Hills Mall is closed. And so they are fixing it up, revitalizing it. So it's just like what I was saying. And this is part of L.A. County as well, or I consider it to be. So MacArthur Park closure proceeds calmly despite the fears of repeat Echo Park violence. So this is by Gregory E. Matthew Ormseth. Okay, and so they had a lot of people that were transient people that were around the uh, MacArthur Park area. So there was a homeless issue, as is in most places. And so despite weeks of fear over the violent confrontations of the resistance, a nightfall came quietly to MacArthur Park on Friday. Okay, so the park had just west of downtown L.A., closed for 10 weeks beginning at 10.30 p.m., the culmination of a 10-month project to guide homeless people living in tents around the park toward housing and supportive services. So encircled by a chain link fence, the park's southern half was clear of the tents that had once crowded its eastern edge. Within the fencing, a few people slept on the stone benches. So signs of a fix to the barrier stated that the park was temporarily closed to renovation. So they're cleaning up something that they should have been cleaning up a long time ago. But now they're cleaning it up all of a sudden. Okay? I don't even think it's just because of the homeless issue. I think this is another place that they want to make it clean because they know that a new group of people are moving in. And they're not that far from the downtown area. There's been a lot of gentrification in that downtown area. It's already started long, you know, before the big project down there. And so more and more people, as they are coming down from the mountains and coming out of the beachfront property and coming out of the suburbs and want to live closer inland, they are moving down in, in these areas that people used to call their home. And <clears throat> they want these properties over here. And so they don't want to see the homeless people all out there. And they don't want to see certain people in these communities just hanging out. And so they're going to change the face of all of this. And so this is another project that they've been working on as well. And so they're just making it look like they're just focusing on helping the homeless people. They're not helping those people. They, that's a temporary fix. Because if you're just saying, oh, we're going to get them services and we're going to, you know, it's easy to say. They've been saying that for years. What they're trying to do is trying to clean that park up and they're trying to clean it up because they know a new group or new group of folks are coming in. And so <clears throat> it says it's encircled with a chain link that the park's southern half was clear of tents that had once crowded the eastern edge. So within the fencing, a few people slept on the stone benches. So signs that were affixed to the barrier stated that it, the park was temporarily closed due to renovation. So think about that. So they're doing a heavy cleanup around there now. And so as the night fell, a handful of activists, as they say, showed up for a planned demonstration that failed to materialize. Okay. And so the police were nowhere to be seen. So somehow... The activists, I guess, whatever they were trying to do, it didn't really take off in the direction that they wanted it to. So to make Arthur, it's unfenced northern half. Life unfolded as it did on most other Friday evenings. So groups of children and young men kicked a soccer ball and a group of older men playing a game on the sidewalk of uh, crabs. And the vendors sold hot dogs, corn, and ice cream and from their push carts and about 10 uh, tents were pitched in the park north of the Wilshire Boulevard, far fewer than the previous week. So when the corner of the South Alvarado and the Wilshire was crowded with tents on the other makeshift dwellings weeks ago, late September, a notice was announcing the impending closure and it sparked a fear that the move would result in conflict between authorities and people living in that park. And so the advocates came in because they have these activists that are, you know, representing the homeless people as sort of a mediator to say, you know, you need to treat these people more with respect, not to 
just kick them out of wherever they've always known and maybe this is it for them. So to basically be in, in their defense for their behalf. So many pointed to the violent crackdowns in March when the police faced off with the protesters and people living in Echo Park, which was also scheduled to be cleared of all people in closed temporarily, but unlike the March closure, officials made sure to give the public advance notice and provide people living in the MacArthur Park with ample time to comply with this order. And so the LA Homeless Service Authority and the homeless agency called PATH started relocating people to shelters or housing and doing outreach, which they should have done a long time ago. Why is it all of a sudden right now? Now, I know a lot of people have been talking about homeless. I'm one of them. But, you know, you can talk about it all you want. Nothing will happen. But all of a sudden, something's happening. And so I really feel like this has to just all connected. Like, that's what I'm saying. I feel like it's all connected. They, they're, they're getting ready for the changes that are, are occurring in these cities. Because they know the people who was once didn't want to live in these cities are now moving in. So the L.A. Homeless Services Authority and the Homeless Agency PATH started relocating people. You hear that? The shelters and housing doing outreach in January. So Sedillo told the time. So the city officials have billed the project as rehabilitation, is what they call it, and said that the closure is limited to a portion of the park south of Wilshire Boulevard. Okay. And so the City Department and Recreation and Parks plans to use the closure to catch up on the maintenance put, that was put off by the pandemic. So the projects cost $1.5 million to do this and included upgrades, lights, replant. Think about it. Look at the upgrades, what they're going to be. Lawn repair, irrigation, new park benches, lights, and replanted the replanted lawns. So Sidello told the Times, um, that he expects the park to reopen sometime in January of next year, so all the fencing and barricade will be removed by then. So as the twilight sunk into the night, at least one of the MacArthur Park's residents said that he had offered housing, but wasn't ready to leave the independence and freedom of living in his own terms. So some people are out there for other reasons, or maybe they are out there because they want to be out there, and they've been used to that environment. So the 56-year-old declined to give his name, said that he was known around the park as John the Merciful. So John spoke with the Times and the park's more than half of, his said, of, of what was said. He had been living there for about a year after suffering a serious hip injury that has left him unable to get around without the wheelchair. And so since living in the park, he has come to value the sense of the camaraderie among the encampment residents, he said. So, however, he acknowledged that there are dangers such as the four young gang members. Um, when four young gang members believed that he was selling drugs, demanded to pay him to pay them rent. So he protested that the gang members had beat him up and in his wheelchair, he said. And so rats are also a serious enough issue in the park that residents have been able to store. They haven't been able to store food in their tents because of rats. And so he notices the flow of people out in and out of the park, residents leaving for shelters and other temporary housing and other encampments in the city. So I guess I just procrastinated, he said, but I like being alone. So that was basically the end of the story. And so... This is what I've noticed is that a lot of cleanup, a lot of projects have been happening, but you notice they just kind of leave it open for you to, to wonder, okay, why why is it this happening? And it's been so many years and not, nothing was done and all of a sudden something's getting done. You know, and it's not just because I, I think maybe the governor has something to do with this wanting to have these things done. It's been long overdue, but then I do believe there are also groups of people that are once were living further away are now trying to purchase homes or either they're renting them. Maybe they have decided to, to move inland because of the changes that are going on in the world. And so um, I'm just saying this is just an idea that I've come up with, but I believe it is a strong, strong idea that is happening. But anyway, 
I'm going to um, let you see this and let you decide what you think. But this thing should have been done long ago. I don't think this is something that, that they should have just started doing. I think this thing should have been worked out long ago. But yes, they have been um, worried too that there was going to be a backlash of violence. But, you know, with homeless situation, you know, homeless is not easy to, an easy fix. And so they've already spent a whole great deal of money for the homeless situation as it is. But you hear what they said they were going to use 1.5 million to clean this park up. Why? You know, why now? And my question from why the answer to that question is I feel like people are moving in. They're changing these neighborhoods. These neighborhoods are gentrifying very fast. They're buying a property over here. Are they renting a property? They're moving in. They're moving a different group of folks in here. And so that is the reason why I believe that this is going on like it is.